everyone. Hope you are all doing good. I am Raghavi Ravichandran, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Biotechnology, Faculty of Engineering, Karpagam Academy of Higher Education. The purpose of this lecture series is to understand about the cell structure and function. Okay, now everyone close your eyes and imagine a wall made up of brick. What is the basic thing that you see? It is a single brick, right? So the same thing. Our human body is made up of millions and trillions of basic building blocks which is called cell. So obviously we should know about our basic building block which is called cell. In this lecture video, we are going to see about this cell structure and function in 8 modules. In the first module, we are going to see about the introduction of cell which covers the basic things. In the second module, we are going to see about the cell membrane and structure. In the third thing, we are going to see about the nuclear organization. In the fourth thing, we are going to see about the cell cycle. In the fifth one, basic chemical constituents of living bodies. In the sixth one, structure and function of carbohydrates and proteins. In the seventh one, structure and function of nucleic acids and proteins. And finally, we are going to see about the types, properties and functions of enzymes. Let us enter into the first module that is introduction to cells. For this, we should know about the landmarks of cell discovery. Discovery of cells is the remarkable advancement in the field of science. This leads to know about the all living organisms are made up of cells and those cells are carrying out various functions in our body. In the year of 1665, Robert Hooke viewed a thin slice of cork under the compound microscope. He viewed small rooms in this. He considered those small rooms as cells and they are not moving and he concluded that all cells are non-living things. In the year of 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who discovered the microscope, viewed a drop of water under the high magnification power compound microscope. He observed that molecules are moving and they are living things. And he named them as animalcules, which is now called as bacteria. And then, in the year of 1883, Robert Brown found a nucleus inside the cell. This played a very important role in the field of cell biology. Later on, today, all scientists and many researchers are going in precision medicine, bioimprinting, biosimilars, etc. Even now we are developing our own stem cells. These are the basic things of discovery of cells in a cord. Tell me, what is cell? You know what? Cells are the basic structural and functional unit of life and for all living organisms. We are having different types of cells in our body which is shown in this picture. Cells have different organelles, different shapes and different sizes which we will see in this forthcoming slides. The study of cells from its structure to the functions of each organelle is called cell biology. The size of cells ranges from 0.0001 mm to nearly 150 mm across. Even though the size of the cell is very small, they perform very unique and complex functions. Significantly, they provide energy to the body by converting the nutrients from the food that we are taking. Now, let us look into the cell theory. The discovery of cells leads to the development of classical cell theory. In the year of 1839, Skuwan and Matthias proposed cell theory. The first part of the cell theory is that all organisms are made up of cells. The second part of the theory is that cells are the basic unit of life. 
In the year of 1858, Rudolf Virchow stated that all cells come from the pre-existing cells through the process of cell divisions. After that, many technologies have improved and new discoveries are there. That new findings have proposed new modern cell theory. Those three additions are all cells of the organisms within the similar species have almost similar characters, structure and chemical nature and all energy flow occurs within the cells. And finally, very major thing is that DNA in a cell is passing between the other cell during the cell division and this leads to the genetic information transfer from parents to offspring. And these are the basic theories that we are following till today. Now, we are going to see about the classification of cells. Cells are different types based on its number, shape and size. First, we are going to see about the classification of cells based on its number. There are different types of cells based on its number. Basically, two types. One is unicellular and another one is multicellular. As the term suggests, uni means one and multi means many. Okay, now let's see about the unicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms are made up of only one cell. For example, amoeba, euglena, paramecium are all comes under this category. Prokaryotes are also included in this category. You know, egg is also an unicellular organism. And let's come to the multicellular organisms. Multicellular organisms are made up of many cells, whether it may be different cells or similar cells. Okay, rats and then cats and elephants, all organisms are comes under this category. It includes both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Now let us look into the classification of cells based on its size. The cells are very small in size and they cannot be viewed through our naked eye. For this we use microscope which is an instrument that magnifies and enlarges the image of the cell. As we have already discussed cells are the main structural and functional unit of their life. Then why are they so small? And why are there no organisms with huge cells? Can we have the answer? Yes, basically the reason is fast and easy food. Small sized cells finds it very easy to pass the nutrients, gases and water in and out of the cells. Whereas large sized cells finds it very difficult. In this picture you can see the different sized cells and organisms from an atom to a humans. The size of the cells varies only based on its performance. It is not that elephant is having large sized cells and rats are having small sized cells. Only based on the performance, the size of the cells varies for all organisms. Finally, we are going to see about the classification of cells based on its shape. Cells are of various shapes. You know what? Prokaryotic organism, amoeba, don't have any regular shapes. Majority of the cells have oval, round, elongated, shaped organisms. Okay? Then consider which gives a shape to a room. A wall, right? Like a cell membrane provides a shape to a cell. In humans, nerve cells are elongated, which is used for the cell signaling. Whereas, red blood cells are spherical which is used for the movement it comes to the characteristics of cells the characteristics of cells are very significant it mainly concentrating on nucleus cell membrane mitochondria lysosome and cell replication process first cell membrane covers all the cell organelles and nucleus carries the genetic information which transfers from parents to offsprings you know, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell which provides energy to the whole body. And then cell replication is the process of multiplication to produce their own copies. And finally, lysosomes. Lysosomes are organelles that digest unwanted materials. 
For example, when we are introduced into an antigen or any dust particles that are entering into our body, these lysosomes digest those unwanted materials. Cells play an important role for the growth and development of an organism. The vital roles of the cells are as follows. First, it provides the support and structure with the help of cell wall and cell membrane. And second, it facilitates the growth of an organism by the process of mitosis. In this process, parent cells divided into two daughter cells. In third, it aids in the reproduction process with the help of mitosis and meiosis. In mitosis, parent cells divided into two daughter cells. But in the process of meiosis, the daughter cells are diverse from the parent cells genetically. And fourth one, it allows the transport of substances. In the case of waste materials, the waste materials has to eliminate it out of the cells. And in the nutrients engulfing, the nutrients has to move into the cells. Finally, it has to produce the energy. In the plants, it produces the energy in the process of photosynthesis and in animals, it produces energy in the form of respiration. Now comes to the types of cells. The cells are majorly divided into two types. One is prokaryotes and another one is eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, they don't have nucleus. The genetic materials are suspended over the cytoplasm and that is called nucleoid. And the examples are bacteria, cyanobacteria, etc. In the case of eukaryotes, they have true nucleus and we are all comes under the category of eukaryotes. And eukaryotes are furtherly classified as animal cells and plant cells. In the comparison of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, just look into the picture in this slide. Prokaryotes are smaller in size with a size of 0.2 mu meter to 2.0 mu meter. Whereas eukaryotes are larger in size with a size of 10 mu meter to 100 mu meter. Nucleus, mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum are absent in prokaryotes but these are present in eukaryotes. Ribosomes are smaller in prokaryotes and larger in eukaryotes. DNA is circular in prokaryotes whereas it is linear in eukaryotic organs. Then we come to the comparison of animal cells and plant cells. Again look into the picture. Do you find any differences? Plant cells are rectangular in shape whereas animal cells don't have regular shape. Sometimes it will be in circular in shape. Plant cells produce energy by the process of photosynthesis whereas animal cells produce energy by the process of respiration. Plasma membrane and endoplasmic reticulum are present in both cells. But centromeres are present in animal cells but absent in plant cells. Now we come to the conclusion of this session. We have seen about the basics of cells. Can we rewind that? Cells are the basic structural and functional unit of life. And also we learn about the function, characteristics, classifications based on number, shape and size and types of cells like prokaryotes, eukaryotes, animal cells and plant cells. Hope you have learned the basics of cells in this session. In the next session, we are going to see about the cell membrane and organelles. Thank you.